Hello, athletes. This is Debbie Potts, and I am so motivated to talk about the subject today, how to fuel and train for an endurance event, especially that is say five, six months away, perhaps a marathon, for example, June rock roll marathon in San Diego, as I'm super inspired to share some tips and some of my experiences doing too much of fasting too much of low carb, too much of not eating enough prolonged fasting. And then the other people that are doing too high of heart rate, doing too much sugar during their runs and not creating base training as it's January and the race isn't until June. And so really want to share some things I've learned and I feel young, but then I just realized how long ago I started coaching people. So now I feel old, but just want to share some experiences with you, the endurance athlete. So let me get my picture out of the way here. I am finding my purpose. You may wonder why I'm not huge on social media. I just don't like spending a lot of time wasting my time on Instagram. I'm not ever doing TikTok. I'll guarantee you that. And Facebook, I just try to merge them together. So I'm not a big social media person because I find I'm working on a computer. That's enough time. And so I am just trying to share my story, my purpose, my why with you, the endurance athletes that's listening to my podcast on audio versions. And those that started watching me on my YouTube channel, the low carb athlete. And I always want to clarify the low carb athlete doesn't mean zero carbs. The podcast used to be called the whole athlete. I am a low carb, high protein, high fat, uh, athlete. I do feel like I'm fat adapted. I've been doing this for 20 years and I'm trying to explain to you that it is an N equals one experiment and journey to figure out what works best for you as an athlete, how to feel, train and perform your best. So why do I talk about that from experience? Well, going back in time, finding my purpose is what I finally focus on just the endurance athlete. Um, well, pre COVID pandemic, I was owning a fitness studio and that took over my life for 10 years and caused me a lot of my chronic stress issues I've had over the years. And I moved my life and relocated my job to be remote and to coach athletes of all levels. You don't have to be professional or even exercise, just people that are interested in getting more fit, but they also want to be healthy and lose weight, fat weight and perform their best in just daily life, you know, show up with purpose and energy, but also working on your longevity, your aging process, as I always say, your future self. So What's my why I'm finally found my people are like me driven, ambitious. The previous me, I did endurance events for a very long time. And I've been a personal trainer and a coach for a very long time and tying that all together as I became a nutritional therapy practitioner and FDN practitioner and putting that all into my coaching. So let me get the right button to screen, change the screen. So over the years, I created some content. I started writing blogs when I, 10 years ago, and I'm going to start sharing this a lot more this year because suddenly it's 2023. And just about this time, 2013, I was, I did Carlsbad marathon, which was today, January. And then I did a 50 K trail run in Bellingham, February, 2013, and then March, I went to my Todd Dirk and mastermind group. That's just here where I now close to where I live and where I was just running this morning in Torrey Pines at the Hilton. We had our, our biannual mastermind retreat and I had uh, some issues, some health issues. And obviously something was broken. Multiple things were broken. We call metabolic chaos in my body. Previously to that, I was racing a lot. And my background is kind of share my lessons learned are based on my background. So I started personal training clients and running fitness studio in college 
out of college. I worked at the YMCA as a health fitness director for years and started at the Bellevue Club where I worked for a long time in Bellevue, Washington. And I was the assistant fitness director, ran all the fitness programs. I was a personal trainer. I was one of the top trainers and I also taught Pilates mat class over the years. I got trained in that. I stopped Pilates and I did yoga fit, started teaching yoga for athletes and different types of yoga and created programs like sugar detox programs and the fit life program and all these things I started doing, gosh, 20 years ago. And I opened my own fitness studio up in 2010 and 2009, I started a little studio and opened my bigger studio that I just really wanted to have an all-in-one studio that offered the personal training, the circuit training, the massages, the acupuncture, and over time, you know, got to have an infrared sauna and do kind of more holistic health. So over the years, I really learned as a business owner you know, I wrote my book, Life is Not a Race, in 2015 to share my journey to help other people. After that, I put together what I created 10 years ago, the holistic method that I couldn't really help athletes or just clients in general. My clients are a lot of them I've had for 20, 25 years and they're in their 70s, late 60s. And so it's really training the whole individual, the whole athlete with nutrition, exercise, sleep, you know, really prioritizing our sleep working on stress management, movement, mobility throughout the day, digestion and gut health, hydration, getting those minerals, and then happiness, play, laughter. And this is based on my own experience as a, a driven, ambitious, high-performing individual myself. I found I was doing everything too much, more is better, and led myself to adrenal exhaustion or breakdown and burnout, hypo, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal access, HP access dysfunction. So basically domino effects, metabolic chaos, disaster starting obviously showed up in 2013. But what I'm trying to share is that it didn't just, my health didn't, just didn't break down one day in March, 2013. It was over time. There's red flags that I probably was too driven and ambitious and too busy to pay attention. So my lessons learned are kind of what I teach people now is the Goldilocks effect really the, on the importance of taking a personalized approach to all this information N equals one experiment. And it's not ever stopping, you know, it's not six week program. It's not three months, six months. It is ongoing life changes. We grow, we evolve, we have new adventures and experiences in life. And so we need to change and adapt sometimes for the better and embrace the aging process and not blame it. So variation, mixing things up really key. You know, when I'm working with my clients, female cycling, hormonal clients, they got to change their workouts and their food plans and everything every week, right? We're going to match it with the hormone cycle. When you are a man, we just want to maybe change the workout every month and have purpose and change the variation of being in nutritional ketosis, adding more carbs, having that keto flex type approach that Ben Azadi talks about. And then really the attitude, you know, I found I was so serious and intense and high strung that I find now the happiness and play gratitude is so essential to calming me down and bringing me back to balance and keeping me out of that sympathetic overdrive, sympathetic dominance, fight or flight. So having a positive attitude, having positive mindset creates positive vibes and energy, and that can be contagious to other people you're around. So I really think that's an important part of being a fit and healthy athlete. And then using your intuition, really paying attention to how you feel, how's your body responding? How's your energy? How did that food make you feel? And knowing when you probably have some red flags that you need to sometimes push pause and reset and reboot your system. So that's a big part of my coaching program with clients is really start paying attention to you. Because as I said, my adrenal exhaustion, and that's just what I'm going to call it because it's just easier that it just didn't happen March, 2013. It happened years before I was doing Ironmans. I started doing Ironmans in 2001 and I started doing low carb and higher fat in ugh, zone diet about 2005. And I was doing 
heart rate training starting. I joined Mark Allen elite team 2004, I think, and doing Ironmans 2001 until 2012 on and off until I could not race anymore. Some years it took off because of injuries. Other times I was like, Oh, I don't feel like doing Ironman Hawaii or Boston marathon this year. I'm going to take a break and tried to get pregnant one year and that didn't work. And I just kept racing and I I'm on a mission now to teach you that when to eat, what to eat, why, how is really important as well as matching your nutrition with your exercise. I was 10 years ago, seriously doing keto, low carb, high fat. I was doing fasted exercise. So for example, I just realized today, 10 years ago, I think it was February when we had our retreat in Torrey Pines Hilton. I remember I, I couldn't eat any of the food they're eating because it wasn't on my food list in my head. I was so intense about sticking with a high fat, low carb diet that I would only eat fat and I wasn't eating anything. And I had, I think fat coffee in the morning. And that night that I had my chapter, I wrote in the book when I got super incredibly sick from drinking alcohol for our party the night, I was sick for a week after that and changed my life since then. But that moment really made me realize something was wrong. But I look at what I did previously to drinking alcohol. I wasn't eating all day. I did, I think a fat coffee probably in the morning and I didn't eat all day. And then I did a speed workout and then I didn't want to eat before the party. So I had alcohol and you know, what happens then is not good. So I was doing all the right things. I was doing low heart training. I was getting my higher fat foods. I was being in nutritional ketosis, but I was exercising a lot. I was training for an Ironman at that time in March, February, March, 2013, I was training for Hanu half Ironman. And that was that June. And then I was doing Ironman Canada that August. And so my point is now to finally focus, even though it's been so many years to really know when you should eat, when you should have some calories, when it's okay to do that heart rate workout without eating, when it, when should you do speed workout? When should you increase your heart rate? So low carb athlete topics I've spoken about many times on this podcast on the low carb athlete YouTube channel is where I'm posting my videos, but just to summarize how important it is to really test and not guess. And that goes with recovery and repair is using whoop or aura ring or Hanu health really measuring your heart rate variability is super important to know. Am I doing too much? What is something wrong with my health on the inside out? Because if we're training, as I see a lot of clients too high heart rate, they are digging themselves into a hole and then they add stress of a job stress as a family. And then they stop not eating anything. And then your body has more stress. And then you're working out high heart rate for a long period of time, over 45 minutes, another stress. So we have so many stressors hitting us left and right. They accumulate and overfill that beaker of stress. So there is a, a system to become fat adapted athlete, to improve your ability to burn fat at higher heart rates at longer time. There's an appropriate time when it is beneficial to your athletic performance to eat nutrient dense foods and nature's carbs, specific carb timing in your evening meal for your workout the next day. If it's a longer workout, so there's so much information to go into, and I've tried to break that up in shorter videos. So you can go back to other videos on this YouTube channel but really talk about your health, so training the whole you, starting with earthing and grounding, getting mineral rich water, getting outside daylight, seeing that sunrise in the morning, getting your eyes, looking to the sun, sun gazing, really important to create the foundations and then figure out when to eat, why to eat. I'm not going to go into this all now, but we've talked about this. What is fasted exercise? That's when your heart rate is in zone one or two below your math, max aerobic training zone. So we'll go over this in previous podcasts and videos, but glucose, insulin, you know, testing your blood sugar, getting lab tests is really important. How fasting is good, but just matching it on your non-workout days or a strength training day and maybe a low, easy walk. You know, there's importance 
to lifting heavy weights, important to do hit training and training for your marathon or long distance events. But sometimes it is beneficial to add some small bit of calories as I did this morning in, uh, my coffee and added some collagen and some coconut creamer in there from Laird's that I had some coconut sugar and MCT oils to have a little fat protein and carbs. So you really want to watch for women, especially that kiss peptin hormone. It will get down regulated when your body is under stress It's protecting yourself. So our body is amazing and it is so intelligent. And we have that innate intelligence that it will put everything on hold. There's a reason I don't have kids. There's a reason my body was under too much stress when I was training for Ironmans, running my own business and working four in the morning until seven at night, I'd get home. I was burning the candle at both ends and then top that off with not eating enough calories, not getting enough protein in. And I was just doing focus on eating fat and not getting the carbs. So you have to really be cautious on your exercise, feeling and training. So this information is not my point, but just know that we can go into this. Let me know if you want to cover supplements and how to figure out your training. So it's the Goldilocks effect, not too hot, not too cold, just the right temperature for you. So that is going to be different for you. I look at genetics. I'm doing the wild health certification course. Now I've done DNA fit Academy in the past. And I just find it really fascinating to do look at your genetics as well as your lab testing and really looking at your adrenal function, cortisol, melatonin, doing a Dutch hormone test and looking at your GI map, looking at your food zoomers, food sensitivities, gut intolerance, and look at just your blood chemistry. So common problems as fuels Leighton Phillips. And I did a podcast a few months ago, but reasons they started S fuels is really what happens to a lot of us muscle fatigue and tightness as you start racing. So you're glucose dependent. And I watched people do this in a training run yesterday, anti-inflammatory used after long training days. If you start to take Advil and the leave after every workout, if you have digestion issues, some resistant belly fat, you know, you have GI stress when you run, you have diarrhea, maybe you're constipated. Maybe your just gut just feels bloated and heavy when you're training. And then there's people that I see that are not losing weight. You're doing the training, but you don't understand why you can't lose weight. And I'm sure there's someone listening that gets what I'm talking about because i see it all the time and it's a common story. So Leighton said this, I don't know where I got this it was a few years ago, but in 2013, it's funny. He was the same year when he changed his life, but I found this article, but 2013 off season, Leighton reduced his miles down by 90%, reduced grains, sugar bars, pastas, rice juices, sports drinks, and increased more quality fats and low glycemic carbohydrates, nutrient dense carbs. I'll say, you know, nature's carbs, really. When we say carbs, think nature's carbs, get rid of the crap. And he says, as I entered racing season, I increased my weekly mileage and found my body had fueling flexibility. He was using fats and carbs. Remember, we'll talk be, again about carbs, your backup fuel tank with greater tolerance. And he could endure all day training sessions without the dramatic slowing from over tight fatigue muscles. No longer did he need anti-inflammatory meds after training. His gut distress was gone and recovery from long sessions was faster compared to single, uh, sipping on carb drinks, gels, and bars. And then he looked for packaged foods to use in training and racing to match his low carb fueling and lifestyle program. And all he could find is what I have experienced is sweet bars, drinks, and chews filled with sugars, syrups, and refined grains. So that's why Leighton created S fuel. So that's one of my favorite companies and couples that run their own company. It's pretty amazing. Okay. So the next topic is Maffetone. If we'll talk about that math training, but the art and science of the low carb performance athlete. So if you really want to know science, go back and read Phil Maffetone's book on the endurance athletes, like 20, 30 years ago, wrote a book and then Vulcan Finney's book, the art and science, low carb performance. So that's where you can get a lot of information that really changes your mindset on how to be a standard athlete to a low carb, high fat endurance athlete. So remember when I'm talking about low carb athlete and, and timing your carbs, it's more for endurance sports. 
you're going to even tolerate more carbohydrates if you're doing a CrossFit type of higher intensity workout. So think about what intensity your workouts are and what your fuel plan and training schedule looks like. So this is looking at endurance athletes, but just to summarize, uh, you can read the Volk and Finney's book. It's amazing. It's quite simple, short read, but great information that started kind of a low carb athlete world, high carb diets for athletes, typical athletes. And I saw this yesterday. They're, they're filling up on carbohydrates before, during, and after their workouts or training run, and they're using carbs as their main fuel tank to exercise. So we'll see little video pictures somewhere I have in here, but think carb fuel tank, 2000 calories, your fat fuel tank as 40 thousand to 80,000 calories dependent depends on the person, right? So it averages say 2000 calories available in our muscle liver glycogen stores. So when we are training for endurance, long distance events, we should be training where we are burning fat and training our body to depend on fat for fuel. So if you are metabolically inflexible, you're not able to go from carbs to burning fat. We want to train you to be a fat adapted athlete by how you eat and how you train your intensity, heart rate training, metabolic testing. The body is not able to switch from carbs to fats, to predominant exercise fuel source. So that's metabolic inflexibility, flexibility. You want to be able to be burning fat and carbs are your backup fuel tank, really important part. So how do you get to be fat adapted? Think about fire burning. How do you feed your fire? If you have a fire burning and you put kindling on the fire, you have to keep adding more kindling. If you have big fat, slow burning logs, it will stay burning longer, right? So think about how to become fat adapted. We want to flip that switch from being carb dependent to fat dependent work on becoming fat adapted so we can become more metabolically flexible. So we switch to a low carb, high fat protein plan, get four to six weeks. And I've talked about this another cycle, what Dan Plews talks about in your IQ, how to build up to be fat adapted athletes for the five phases, specific carb timing. Once you are fat adapted, you can do when you're doing race simulators, race day, practice races and a race day itself. And there's ways that we talk about in previous shows as well, building up from say you're having hundred carbs a day, nature's carbs, not crap. And then going up a little bit higher up to 200 grams, two to three days before a big race. That's if you're doing like an Ironman, a little different if you're doing a marathon. So training hard, perform longer, recover faster is if you can train your body at that fat burning heart rates. So Volk and Finney have conducted and published human research that supports this approach, adding growing better body of literature. And it's probably even more so since I wrote this out, that has tons of information for the endurance athlete to reduce dietary carbohydrates, to optimize fat metabolism. And I think more and more these days, people are not just talking about fat, it's fat and protein. So that's why I don't like saying keto or keto carnivore is just eat nutrient dense, whole foods that balance your blood sugar. And we talk a lot about prioritizing protein as Dr. Gabrielle Lyon speaks about, and I'm a big fan because obviously I share it all the time. So we want to train the body to rely on that fat tank that has 40,000 calories of fuel versus short tank. And how do you know if your carb tank? Well, yesterday I watched people do their second week of training for San Diego marathon, the rock and roll marathon in June. And they were having sugary drinks, electrolytes, and I think they did hour to hour and a half run. It was about eight miles for some people and the beginners. I really want to make sure if you're beginning training to train, to burn this fat fuel tank here, we want to train at lower heart rate. So if we can go look at Maffetone's information somewhere down here, we talk about in the holistic method training, how you can train the 180 minus your age is say you're 40 years old, 180 minus 40, you're going to be training at around 
140 heart rate. So even keeping 130 heart rate to 140 heart rate on all your workouts. And then some days we might end in 20, 30 second sprints to finish your workout, but we are going to keep that heart rate base training. You're going to pace yourself, not by your miles, not by your pace, your splits, but by your heart rate and go by time. Really important part. And what to eat beforehand as you become fat adapted, it'll be a little different, but sometimes you can just have water and electrolytes, maybe a Vespa. You know, I like to do some Bub's collagen, an MCT powder or Laird's creamer. They have a non-dairy creamer. It's good to use too. That can be good for me. So what you eat is important. We'll talk about that. Prioritizing protein, as I say, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon talks about for endurance athlete you are wasting your muscles. And remember cortisol is up higher stress hormone after about 45 minutes. So we really want to prioritize protein. This is why I've really changed last year, really last year about not fasting so long. I used to not until recently, I was not, I'd go to the gym at night and not eat after lunch, like three o'clock. And then I would be going to the gym, lift weights, not eat anything, maybe some amino acids, capsules that night, water, but not eat till the next day. And now I'm trying to not be so strict to myself. If I feel kind of hungry, I'll have a little something. I've been making this probiotic yogurt and I'll put the collagen powder in that and some sunflower nut butter and get my protein. So I'm really focused on getting my protein in per day. Um, you know, looking at a hard reset, they talk about with optimal fat metabolism and Peter Dufty, there's endure IQ program, Dr. Leon or Leon lion, Gabrielle lion, Dr. Gabrielle lion. I also had Leon lion, eat your protein. Your ideal pound of body weight is what you want to eat in protein. So really thinking about, am I eating enough protein? If I'm trying to get that gold body weight, say you're 140 pounds, well, then you need to eat 140 grams of protein a day. But remember, you only can do about 30, 50 grams in one meal. So how do you time that out and spread it out throughout the day? You need to have protein at your breakfast. Maybe that's not a meal. Maybe it's liquid and coffee or shake or tea that you're getting your protein in. And then you have lunch. I tend to do my main meal at lunchtime around two o'clock and then have something in the evening. I don't like to eat before bed. And most clients do best too, not eating two, three hours before bed, but having your main meal in the afternoon is going to give you more digest time. So getting enough protein is essential. I love Dr. Lyons posts. She did a good one on Instagram. Uh, muscle health. It's perhaps the most important organ system as it relates to combating our current health crisis, regaining exceptional health and maximizing physical performance. Muscle is even more critical as we age, yet it's often overlooked even by modern day metal practice, medical practices. If your muscles are healthy, you live better. The quality of life directs correlates to your muscle health. The primary function of muscle goes way beyond movement. It's the foundation of metabolism and your suit of armor. Skeletal muscle aids in regulating blood sugar and blood lipids. And then she talks about the, her Leon, why ah, I cannot do that lion protocol because she has a new program out and I really love what she's doing. So I said, if you need a coach, let me know. I'd love to be involved, but her protocol is getting people to add in more protein and figure out the timing. It's an endocrine organ. So muscle is an endocrine organ that secretes myokines, which are proteins that help regulate metabolism and all other tissues of the body. Your muscle is metabolic currency. The stronger and healthier your muscles, the more effective your body is at managing carbohydrates and fat. Healthy muscles, muscle mass increases your survivability of nearly all injuries or illnesses. Let's shift our attention from the muscle only as it relates to performance and focus on how it can be leveraged for health. So she has her lion protocol to learn the building blocks, how to begin your journey, correct your body composition, take care of inflammation, regain control of blood sugar, diet, and high quality protein. So to get stronger, as I'm talking to you, the endurance athlete today, 
we really want to figure out our nutrition to be fat adapted athlete, but including not just all fat. I like more of a 40, 30, 30 split with people as athletes. We need to add in more protein because I look at people's logs and they're not getting <laughs> protein in and I have to continuously work on that. So it's not just eating tons of fat. We need fat, healthy fats for our cell health and hormones. Our steroid hormones are made from fat. And then we also need protein because we're breaking our muscles down during this cardio. So talk to OFM, optimal fat metabolism. Peter Defty will go back and look at his podcasts on my website, debbiepotts.net. But Peter talks a lot about that in the past year. How to optimize your fat metabolism, become fat adapted, teaching your body to burn fat. And you don't need to always show nutritional ketosis. I'm not a big, there's no point to me as endurance athlete, your goal is to get your body to burn fat when you're exercising. You can be in nutritional ketosis when you're working, when you need that mental focus, when you're fasting. But when you're exercising, it goes to be burning fat and be able to switch to that carb tank when you are anaerobic, when you are doing speed work, when you're doing race pace work, when you are doing a race that's shorter, like a 5k, 10k, but with a half or full marathon or 50k trail run, you're going to be in trouble if you are burning just carbohydrates as your main fuel source. So we need to make that switch. And I would do it now, how you're training, doing that heart rate, Maffetone zone one, two training, adding in strength training a couple days a week or three times, but changing how you're eating, when you're eating, where, what, how all that information is so important, but fats used for aerobic energy, carbs and glucose are used in our fight or flight energy. So when you're running from that lion sprinting, we need to switch to carb glycogen stores. So is strategic carb fueling as a backup fuel tank but we want to improve your carb tolerance once you're fat adapted. So a lot of people are getting in trouble because we go all in, right? We go all keto and forget we need protein. We go all keto, forget that we don't need to be in nutritional ketosis 24 seven. We want to have flexibility in everything. It's not all or none. You still need to be fat adapted and then have ability to have carb metabolism enzymes working. So we really need to have an, a day that you're not eating crap. It's eating real food, but it might be more sweet potatoes with some butter with your steak. It might be having some cauliflower or Brussels sprouts with bacon or uh, potato mash or whatever it might be that you can tolerate, but you're still able to burn fat and get back into nutritional ketosis when you need to. So carb tolerance, we talked about all these slides are in eBooks. If you go to my website, debbiepotts.net to free resources, but really look at Dr. Stacy Stim's info for the female athlete is important too. And we have to keep open-minded. Everyone has different opinions, but it's really looking at, okay, what's my goal? What's my purpose? I'm trying to train for this marathon this year. I want to get faster, stronger, have more power. I want to lose weight and get leaner, but I need to, I want to not need to, I want to get my speed up at that lower heart rate. So it's really the holistic athlete, how I train people. But what Stacey Sims talks about is what I've shared chronic stress, chronic stress impacts everything. And my life previously, I started Ironmans in 2001. I've done, I don't know how many marathons. I don't know how many half marathons. I've coached people for years in all those sports as well as been on a training and team for myself. So stress will ruin you if it's too much as it did to me. So chronic stress and athlete, Stacey Sims, I found this quote on an interview she did with whoop, but regardless of what diet you believe you might have, it comes down to fueling for the stress. It doesn't matter if you are a strength athlete, endurance athlete, team sport athlete, you need to fuel for the training stress. If we don't, if we don't train, let's see, I'm saying this wrong. We don't train and get fit during the training. What happens during training is we're breaking everything down and your body is under incredible load of stress. If you're adding in non-fueling or 
poor fueling, which I think more people do poor fueling, that's another stress on top of that. And that's above and beyond the stress needed for exercise adaptation. Now that's an interview. You can go back and find a Whoop podcast with Dr. Stacy Sims on female athletes. But remember, if you are a busy parent, you're a spouse, or you have a partner, you are working full time, you are having stress with finances, family issues, family loss, like my dad just passed away. There are all sorts of stressors. So if you're training a lot and you are not eating correctly for your body type and your level of exercise and your hormones, be careful. So N equals one experiment. Do you feel best with less frequent fast or shorter duration fast? Do you feel best eating your largest meal after exercise or in the evening, having a little more carbs as your workout feel better the next day? So pay attention to yourself, how you feel, how your energy is, how your sleep quality is, how your workouts are track it, write it down. If you use training peaks, add in comments, track your heart rate, track your HRV, track your aura ring, deep sleep, your REM sleep. You know, what can you do to improve that? So we want to look at what kind of science we can find to figure this out. And there's not a lot on female athletes because they're challenging to do research on, but you want to just focus on your gut health, your digestion, how your metabolism is and really work on the other elements of the holistic method. Also, I threw in this slide. I, I posted on my Facebook page recently, but eating good, healthy fats, and gets confusing and really looking at your genetics here as well, because not everyone can tolerate a lot of saturated fat. So if you some genetic snips, you may do better with less saturated fats. And then when you're cooking, a lot of people cook with olive oil and you shouldn't cook high heat with olive oil said caution with heat is walnut oil, flax, sesame, walnut seeds, fatty fish, grapeseed oil. You don't want to cook in, but Dr. Kate Shanahan talks about the bad fats and she's obviously the expert in the impacts of vegetable oils. If you've read her books and follow her, she is amazing and brings the research to our society on which fats are good for you and avoiding the bad evil fats that are more inflammatory to you than sugar. So at least if you don't decrease your sugar, you can br burn that off just by adding some more jump jacks and jump squats or run the stairs, but the vegetable oils can damage your cells. I've heard some shows I've heard doctors talk about two years of damage. So important part. So the low carb athlete high LCHF is what we say. And I would change that now low carb, high fat, think fat and protein are together, right? So it's animal fat, animal based ketogenic diet eating routine that typically lowers in carbs, higher in fat, moderate proteins. I think it's balanced fat and protein for more people. They have 40% carbs, 30 protein, 30 fat or 30 carbs, 40 carbs. So daily carb amounts will vary from very low 50 grams to 20 grams. If people are metabolically damaged, they have you know, brain issues, cancer, they're going to need and benefit from a lower carb, more ketogenic diet. But for athletes, we can go around hundred, 130 grams higher for some athletes, more muscular you are, as Dr. Gabrielle says, you have more storage tank, your suitcases are bigger. You can tolerate more. And so what it is to be metabolically flexible, the need to be burning that 40,000 calorie storage tank versus 2000 storage tank. The ability to use carbs as a fuel when you need them is the metabolic flexibility. You can flex back to carbs and switch back to fat as your main fuel tank. As I said, the rocket fuel. So we are designed to go for long periods of time without food and use fat as fuel, that fast feast. We should be able to depend on fat for fuel when the carbs, then carbs when we need extra backup. So what I like to do ideally is get people on a treadmill test, get metabolic efficiency testing here. So we can track your progress and measure. So Pinoe, P N O E can look up other people. I know have different testing carts, but I'm trying to work with Pinoe and my friend locally here. We're going to start testing people here, but it's kind of a portable backpack. You can test people on, but we want to see where's your heart rate, what pace you are that you're burning mostly fat and 
figure out your training zones based on where your metabolic crossover point is, where that carb usage goes up and the fat goes down. So we test the REQ, the volume of oxygen to the CO2 level, the RER during rest and exercise. We determine how much fat and carbs are used during exercise. Then you can figure out a little bit more for your training and race day plan. If you can get tested, because that's going to be more accurate towards you where you are now as a snapshot when you do this on that day and time. So you, you can increase your intensity when you know you need to improve that fat burning zone. We figure out where you can do some speed work and see if that changes and do that test ideally once a month. So key steps we found adapted again, go to my eBooks. I'm going to end here, but there's so much information in the eBooks, how to increase your fat burning rate. You know, looking at the Goldilocks effect of fasting, talked a lot about that and personalizing your nutrition program, looking at stress, looking at your lifestyle, exercise, testing your glucose, your ketones, you know, really figuring out fasting if you're doing too much and, you know, check out Peter Dafty's OFM information, look at S fuels information. You can find more on the previous podcast past 10 years, but I'll wrap up that I really would love to remind you that it's not one size fits all approach that if you're training for my example today, if you're training for a marathon in June and you have six months to train, what does that training schedule look like? So if you're running four days a week, each running workout has a purpose. Maybe you're doing your long run typically is Sundays. And then Tuesday, maybe it's an easy run Thursday. Maybe you're doing more of a hilly course. And you get three key workouts and maybe you're doing a speed workout for a fourth day. So what our workout will be for a while is training around that max aerobic engine number, the Maffetone numbers. So we want to look at, where's my chart here? Somewhere down here, way too many slides, but training the Maffetone heart rate. So we can look at where you need to be and stay there for a longer period of time and avoid, here's a map to them. So the max aerobic function heart rate, 180 minus 84 formula is where I want you to stay. Three, four runs a week. Maybe you do biking, still staying at that math heart rate two other days and see how that is. One day is your active recovery day. The older we are, we may benefit from two rest days. I call active recovery days that you're still doing maybe some core work, some Pilates, mobility, yoga type of work, but really looking at three to four days, your long run is your long run, low heart rate. And then towards a race that month or so before six weeks, four to six weeks, we may add some pace work. What's my goal race pace. Once we figure out where you are, what your goals are going to be. And then we can figure out a specific, specific plan. But I see people overtraining. They're going by pace, not by heart rate. You're going to be training anaerobically and not building up that aerobic engine. So really, really important to train right now as you're starting to build that aerobic engine to get faster at lower heart rates. So working on your exercise, but then also nutrition. And then of course, stress impacts everything and sleep is where you recover and repair and movement throughout the day, timing your movement with your nutrition too, to help that blood sugar come down, timing your food with exercise too, like eat, exercising after you are yeah, before, or after you eat, there's timing for everything. And then hydration using LMNT or electrolytes that don't have sugar in them. That doesn't spike your blood sugar. So we want to keep that blood sugar steady. So look at math tones information, you know, great signs of fat burning. He did years ago. You know, he's talking same thing. I started talking about years ago is the stress and exercise and nutrition, but you know, don't forget the happiness. We want to look at all that. So look at the benefits of being a low carb athlete, how you perform, how you train, how you recover is really important. So look at your training plan and make sure you're not doing that black hole training, staying low 80% of the time, then 20% of the time, maybe not yet. You're doing some high intensity interval training. So using a heart rate monitor help. No, I'm staying down here, all my workouts. And then when I'm ready to do speed work, I'm going to go high 
and then recover, go high, not this in-between stuff. So we really want to get more power and speed when appropriate, and then your base and aerobic engine training. So then we can look at, okay, am I fat adapted? How's my nutrition plan? How's my blood sugar level looking? Do I need to eat some calories beforehand? Yes. When you're doing a longer run, if you're doing a, a low heart rate, a slow jog walk, maybe you don't need to eat till afterwards having your protein and getting the nutrition in you need. So it's confusing. Yes. The holistic method coaching program is what I do to help people figure out this. And I pretty much offer longer packages because I can't just help you one or two times. So if you want to dive in deep and do the lab testing, the genetics, hair mineral analysis, put this all together with your exercise, your nutrition, monitoring, or a ring, your HRV, deep sleep, or using whoop, and then looking at your glucose, if you use keto mojo or levels or lumen, or you're doing, um, NutriSense, it's really important to really figure out the N equals one program. So longer podcast that I plan to do, but that just gives you some ideas where to start. Okay. So I will end and let me know if you have questions for upcoming Thursday show with Debbie. See ya.